A year ago, if Pop accidentally broke a vital part while trying to repair the family radio, it didn't matter much, for he could buy a new one. Today, however, new parts, like new radios, are difficult to get. Therefore, when your radio needs attention, it's important that you call not just a handyman, but a highly skilled radio technician. Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. This is uh, part two of our Halicrafters S38 restoration job. And uh, if you haven't seen part one, now it may be a good time to slip back and take a peek at that. Um, we uh, discussed many of the safety issues that are uh, unfortunately uh, present in the S38, but we also came up with a schematic diagram and some alterations as to how we're going to repair those safety concerns. So uh, in this video, we're going to go over what I've done so far, and we're going to discuss what the next steps are. So hang on, hang on just a second, and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, some of these uh, modifications and uh, repairs I've completed so far. One of the uh, tips I, I left out in the first video I should have included in this one, when you're working on an old radio, and you're working on the chassis and whatnot, um, a good step to do is to take all the tubes out. A second really key step to do is to close the tuning capacitors. If you see, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but the tuning capacitors are displayed here. It's easy to accidentally bend them. So if you close the capacitor all the way, they, they stay a little bit protect, protected. And this one's caught for some reason on something. I'm not 100% sure what, but we'll find out. And the same with this one here is the band spread capacitor. Again, it's best to make sure they're fully collapsed so they're protected. This is a bad dial cord that's causing this to be stuck right now. So, um, in further to our first part of the series and dealing with the uh, safety issues, uh, as you can see here, I've installed a fuse block. And it has a 1.5 amp fuse, and you might say, well, why, why 1.5 amps? Why so much? And the radio draws so little. I've seen this particular radio, the set, these S38s, have a flash when you first turn them on to about 1.1 amps. So, I mean, a, a slow blow, smaller fuse would probably work, but 1.5 amp will deal with that flash current when it first starts. And uh, if something goes wrong, it'll very, very quickly trip. So... I've also changed the power cord, and I've updated here to the uh, polarized plug, and you can see we've got a big terminal and a little terminal like we discussed in the other video, and the small terminal is the 120 volt uh, um, supply, and this is, is neutral. I've also made a nice long cord, which is kind of handy, and I put a strain relief on the cord so that you, the original, they just had a knot tied in it so you couldn't pull it out of the chassis. I've gone a little bit further and put a strain relief into the chassis. So I thought they were kind of good. And also, at this point, I've also cleaned up the bulb socket and replaced the bulb. So right now I'm doing my uh, step one, which is dealing with the power supply, the rectifier tube, and the audio tube, as I had mentioned in the past video. So hang on a second, we'll look on the under underside and see what else we've done here. Okay, so you can see some differences here. So we have our power feed down here. Well, I'll just point out right off the bat that uh, I've put two new rubber grommets in here. These rubber grommets are safety issues. They keep the outer case insulated from the chassis. So if something bad did happen, the, cha the, the outer case stays protected. Now these switch pieces screw on at the front here. There's one on either corner here. Uh, switch pieces up here and switch piece up here. They are also held in with grommets. Um, they're still not bad and I don't feel the need to change them so I'm going to leave them. So these are also insulated from the case as well. So this is the back of our fuse block right here. Um, this is where the hot 120 comes in, goes through the fuse, is shunted over to the switch. Um, so the switched side of the switch now also has our safety capacitor that we 
said we would install. It is done here. Um, and we have our rectifier tube and our audio tube. And now it's not uncommon to replace a few of the resistors around these guys. And in this case, I wound up replacing them all. They were all pretty badly out of range. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm being fussy. The resistors in this unit are called to be 20% tolerance. So if you have a 200 ohm resistor and it hits 240 ohms, that means you're at its tolerance level. I don't usually take it that far. I'll go 10 or 15% on a resistor. If I measure 235 ohms on a 200 ohm resistor, I will change it. And I, you know, a lot of them are specified to be a half watt resistor. I don't put half watts back in. I put one watt, two watt, or three watt, much larger res resistors in. And I also put in high tolerance resistors. I only buy 1% tolerance resistors, so they're right bang on. So I've gone through all of the resistors in those two tubes, and they were all drifted pretty good. Some of them were well outside their tolerance range. Some were pretty close on. I didn't feel the need to keep them. I replaced them simple as enough. Plus, there's new two new film capacitors here. This is our new filtering capacitor. We got rid of the big section that they had cobbled in, and I'm to say they had it wired wrong. I don't know if this radio ever really worked right after they had replaced this unit. They kind of sort of had it in bass backwards. So the rectifier tube and the audio tube is done. The filter supply is done. We have the capacitor to the case that we said we were going to change done. We have our safety cap done. We've got our new cord in. We've got our fuse panel. We're, we've got the neutral tied to the case. So all the modifications we said we were going to do in part one are now done. So the next step for this here now is just to go through the unit and replace all of these old wax paper caps. You can see them here very clearly. I've got a video out there on how to identify these guys, what you change and what you don't in an old radio. These are all these old wax paper caps. Most of them are pretty easy. These we're going to move over here because there's a modification we're going to do under here that helps this radio greatly receive sideband. And uh, then we've got some of these dominoes here that we don't generally change. There's another domino tucked under here. There's one under there. They're generally don't screw up and you don't replace them unless you have to unless you've proven them bad. So that's the next step is to change capacitors. Okay, so here are all the components that got replaced so far plus I should add the light bulb. I put a new lamp. Oh I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Put a new lamp in. So this is the filter capacitors that got replaced. These are all the old wax paper capacitors. Again, as I told you in my capacitor um, how-to video, don't even bother testing them. These are just notorious for going bad. I cut all of them out, I replaced them all, and these were the resistors that were either out of range or very close to being out of range. And of course, the new lamp. So we'll uh, have a look at the underside and see uh, how that made a difference. It Because uh, the newer capacitors are smaller, and it tends to clean up and make the visibility in the chassis a little better with the newer components. Okay, so here we are with all of the capacitors replaced. All of the resistors checked. There's one resistor I have that's a 10 mega ohm resistor. That's measuring 1.3 mega ohms that I'm going to change. I don't have in stock, so I'm going to order one. But everything else is done. Um, all my uh, power supply mods are uh, in place as... Uh, shown in the previous video. If you didn't get a chance to see that video, skip back to part one and see how I solved the safety issue of having a hot chassis with the uh, S38. Um, you should find it in Lightning. So the only thing other than having to replace this one resistor that I need to do on the underside is a deal with these trimmer capacitors. This is the oscillator for tuning and this is the selectivity for the front end. And these trimmer capacitors as you can see, they're quite oxidized. It's kind of sort of the color is telling me there may well be some silver in that metal. So I have to take them all apart, take the screws and washers out, clean the tops off, put them back together, and that'll be an alignment right from ground up. But we'll get into that in the next video. So it's going to be a little bit of a more complex alignment because we will have to start from ground zero. But I think at this point, cleaning these all up and putting a little bit of a, 
a preservative compound is, is in order because I think this radio is going to turn out very nice. So the next step here is, is I'm going to flip it over. We're going to clip on a temporary test speaker and we're going to clip on an antenna and we're going to plug it in and we're going to see if it works. Okay, here we go. We're plugged in. I've got a speaker connected in the back and I've got a 40 meter dipole alligator clipped on the back. This will be first power. So you get to find out with me whether it works or not. It really should. Well, it's got a bad tube or something. I've not tested any of the tubes. Just done all the capacitors and resistors and everything we needed to do along with the filters and the power supply mod. So <clears throat> when we turn it on, what we should see is this light should go bright for a second or two, then dim down as the filaments heat up and come up to temperature. The current drops and the light will begin to brighten up. If we see that, we know that our power supply system is good. Um, and it's just a matter of waiting for the tubes to warm up and before we see if we're going to have joy or not. So, uh, doesn't matter how many times I do this, it's always, always a thrill. After 40, 50 years of doing this radio stuff, it never gets tired. So, if you want to place your bat, now is your time to place that bat. So here we go. Oh, there's the bright light it dimmed down like it was supposed to. Let's give it a minute or so to warm up. Oh, I hear noise. Wow, listen to that beautiful noise. It doesn't matter how many times I do this, it's always a thrill. So, I'm on band one, which is the broadcast AM band. Let's see if we've got any, any radio. Oh. And they're proud to be the official freight carrier of the... Wow. That's pretty good without an alignment. That's the AM band, that's the easy band. Let's go up. We're going to go up to the uh, oh, shortwave in, in Crimea. And Russian naval targets and port infrastructure. Sideband. We're going to get that later. Sounds like the Canadian time signal. Maybe. Don't know. Of God and Mammon. And you go, go to your churches today. Okay. Ooh, that's, uh, that's good. Let's go up to the next band, band three. Wow, we got... WWV. I don't think there'll be anything on last band. It's kind of a little later in the evening here, but we'll just take a quick look. It's live. I hear static. Oh. Station in there. WWV. 20 megs. That's pretty good for not being tuned. Can't complain about that. Massaging high vegan promotes the peaceful diet and envisioned with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life. 
a tranquil and glorious all-vegan world. Well, like I said, doesn't matter how many times I do that, I always get a thrill of dragging home an old dusty, dirty, broken radio and breathing life back into it. And this is something you can do. This was not hard to do. Not hard at all with some basic... All of I, I put out a video earlier of all the basic tools and test equipment you're going to need to do this. And for this project here that we're doing, I'm just using those basic tools to get this job done. And so far I've used my soldering station. I've used two multimeters. You know, I've used my basic chiefy meter for doing continuity checks and whatnot. I've used my uh, resistance inductance capacitance meter for checking the capacitors I put in, checking the resistors in chassis. Um, I've not used anything else specialized other than that. So this is not hard. So the next step is going to be heading in towards the cleanup. Um, I have to do the capacitors, those trimmer capacitors underneath. As I showed you, they were quite tarnished. Um, I'm going to be cleaning up the top of the chassis. I'm going to be putting two new dial cords on it. Of course, cleaning up the tubes and sockets, uh, lubricating all the shaft points and whatnot. Once that it's all cleaned up, um, we're going to do what we call a rough alignment. Uh, we'll do the 455 kilohertz alignment here live. And we'll do, and when I say rough alignment, we're going to be doing the oscillator as a rough alignment just to get it in the ballpark. Because once you put this back in the case and you put the bottom on it, the bottom on these first series are metal and the alignment will change as soon as you put that metal bottom back on it. So it, the bottom has little holes in it so you can fish through just to touch it up. So we'll do the, the 455 kilohertz alignment, uh, we'll do the BFO alignment, and then we'll do the oscillator and the front end uh, a rough alignment before we put it all back in the case. But it's going to get the cleanup uh, done to it first. So I think that's it for this video for part two. We're, we've been successful. <coughs> you can be successful too at doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I really thank you for tuning in and, uh, and joining me on this project. We've got many more uh, fascinating ones to come. Once this one's all done, I've got a... Uh, Halicrafters S76 that I'm just dying to get into. It's going to be my own personal set that uh, goes tucked away into my collection. It's uh, been pretty used and abused, but I think maybe we can get it going. So again, that's it for this video. Please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, you'll see lots of other interesting things. And uh, I've got an RME DB22A coming up for a modification as well. That uh, is a very interesting pre-selector. And... Uh, Part three will be simply beginning the alignment stages of this after it's been all cleaned up. So if you have any questions, please post them below. Please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. The news from the battlefronts is good. The newest United Nations offensives, the Red Army's middle gun attacks in Russia, and the British move into Jap-held Burma are making good progress. And in North Africa, the Allied pincers are slowly closing around the Germans and Italians as Hitler frantically tries to hold on to prepare the defenses against an Allied invasion of South Europe. In Russia, in the Middle Dawn Offensive, the Red Army is sweeping westward at a speed comparable to the Nazi advance eastward last July. They have taken Katamarovka, only 55 miles north of Milorovo, and now threaten the entire railway line from Voronezh to Milorovo. Milorovo is a junction point of the Moscow-Rostov Railroad. It has already been cut. In Russian hands, it can and probably will be the base of a Russian offensive south to retake Rostov and smash or trap the entire German force in the great Stalingrad salient.